force F applied to an object, okay, produces M1 to uh, accelerate at 3 meters per second squared. Same force applied to a second object of the mass 2 produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. What is the value of ratio of M1 over M2? All right. So, well, that's, that's kind of easy. Right. We should be able to handle that. Um, it looks like F1 is equal to M1 times 3. Right. And the same F1 is equal to M2 times 1. Right. So, if we were to set these equal to each other, we've got M1 times 3 is equal to M2 times 1, right? M1 over M2 is equal to 1 over 3. So that's part A. B, if M1 and M2 are combined, find their acceleration under the same force, okay? Well, if we were to combine it, right, here, M1 plus M2 is equal to, right? Well, here, it looks like this is M1, right? M1 is going to be producing 3, right? So here, and then here, M2 or is going to be 1, right, meter per second of acceleration, all right? So if I were to think about this, right, my M2, right, my M2 is equal to 3 times the M1 by looking at this. So when I look at this, you know my inertia of M2 has to be three times more massive than my M1. That makes sense, right? So I'm going to actually use that idea and plug that into there and say M1 plus M2 is going to be 3M1. Okay? So my new M, my M total, is equal to 4M1. All right? So I'm applying the same amount of force. The force is equal to M total times A, right? A new, I guess. Or A total, you could say, right? So here, this one is 3 times M1, right? Because this is exactly that. So 3 times M1 is equal to M total is 4M1 times A total, right? So look what happens to my mass ones that will cancel out. So my A total is equal to just three-fourths of meters per second squared. So 0.75. Okay, so that's part B. All right, number seven. A force of 10 newtons act on acts on a body of mass 2 kilograms, what is A, acceleration of the body? Oh, come on, this is easy, right? A, F equals MA, right? 10 newtons is equal to 2 kilograms times A, so A is equal to 5 meters per second squared. If you didn't get that, come and see me after school, and we'll talk. We'll have a nice heart-to-heart -heart talk. B, it's acceleration if the force is doubled Right, if its force is doubled, then it's 20 is equal to 2a, so my acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Again, if you did not get this, come and see me. We'll have a nice heart-to-heart -heart talk. 
All right, uh, number eight. 0 0.005 kilogram bullet leaves the muzzle of a rifle with speed of 320 meters per second. Okay, what is the average force that is exerted on the bullet whilst traveling down the rifle barrel of 0.82 meters long? Okay, well, we if we were to look at how the rifle works. Here is the bullet right here inside a chamber. Now, when the gas explodes, well, when the gunpowder ignites, it explodes and expands the gas that pushes the bullet, right? This expansion of gas pushes the bullet out of the barrel. Right, so our initial velocity of the bullet is zero, and our final velocity happens to be 320 meters per second. The distance that bullet travels in order to accelerate from zero to 320 is delta x, which happens to be 0 0.82 meters. Okay, so let's find out what the acceleration is. And then once we find acceleration, F equals MA. So here, we should use equation number three, which is VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. VF, 320 squared at 0 squared at plus 2 times A times 320. So if we find the acceleration, this acceleration is going to be huge. Right, so 320 squared over uh, seven, 640, right? I'm sorry, this is not 320, this is 0 0.82, right? So here would be 1.64 is equal to A, right? So my acceleration should come out to uh, something like 6.24 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared. So once you know that acceleration, that acceleration is coming from the force of expansion of gas, and that is MA. So the force is equal to mass of the bullet is 0 0.005 times the acceleration, 6.24 times 10 to the fourth. Right, so my ex force of this expansion of gas comes to 312 meters. All right, any questions so far? All right, then let's take a look at the next problem. Uh, two forces, F1 and F2, X on 5 kilogram object. F1 is 20 newtons, right? This is 20 newtons. And F2 is 15 newtons, right? Find the acceleration of A and B, okay? Well, if you know, we need to find the net force, right? So sum of all net force is equal to MA. And we also should find the sum of all net force, which is equal to F1 plus F2. Okay. Well, we know F1 is equal to 20x hat plus 0y hat. And F2 is equal to 0x hat plus 15y hat. So my net force is equal to... 20x hat plus 15y hat. That looks like 3, 4, 5 triangle there. So, right? so the net force magnitude happens to be 25. Right? And what about the angle? Well, the theta happens to be 10 inverse of right? 15 over 20. 
And what is that? So theta comes out to something like uh, is that 37 degrees, I think, right? It should be around 37 degrees. So since my net force is equal to MA, so this is 25 is equal to 5 kilograms times A, so my acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. And the theta is equal to 37 degrees. Okay, so it should be somewhere like this. Now, if you were to take a look at the second one, okay, now we're going to have to have, so 15 newtons, and this is going to be still 20 newtons. So F2 has to be broken up, right? So F2 is going to have F2x and F2y. And this is 60 degrees. So F2x is cosine of 60 times 15, so 7.5. And F2y is uh, F2 sine of 60, right? So 15 times 0.866, right? So what is that equal to? Around 13? Okay. So we do the same thing what we did here, right? So F1 now is equal to right? 7.5 x hat plus... 13 y hat and f2 oh that should be f2 sorry this should be f1 so f1 is equal to 20 x hat plus 0 y hat so if you add them up my net force is going to be uh, 27.5 x hat plus 13 y hat okay So, um, to find the magnitude of that, John, right, what is that? Um, let's see, 27 inverse square plus 13 square square root that separate. I think you'll get something like 30.4, right? And then, since F equals MA, 30.4 is equal to 5 times A. So acceleration is uh, 6.1 or 6.08 meters per second squared. The angle theta must be here somewhere. So if you were to look for the theta, what you need to do is do 10 inverse of 13 over 27.5, right? And I get something like theta is equal to 25.3 degrees. So that's the direction of my acceleration. Since they don't tell you to give just the magnitude of acceleration, it is proper to give the direction as well. You really should, just to be sure. All right? If, it, if they tell you just give me the magnitude of the acceleration, then you just give me this, and you're fine. But since they didn't say about magnitude, you should definitely give directions. Number 10. Uh, one kilogram object is observed to accelerate at... Uh, 10 meters per second squared in the direction of 30 degrees north of east. All right, north of east. So you're going from the east axis, you're going 30 degrees towards north. The force 2 is acting 
on the object with a magnitude of 5 newtons. So this one has 5 newtons. In the north direction, determine the magnitude of the F1. So they're looking for this. Okay. So if this is one kilogram object going this way, my net force is equal to basically 10, 10 newtons, right? And since it is at 30 degree angle, I can break this up, 10 newtons, as my net force that way. And so this would be uh, half, right? So 5 newtons, and this would be 8.66 newtons because this is 30 degrees, all right? So if I were to write my net force in a Cartesian form, it is equal to 8.66 x hat plus 5 y hat, right? So F1 is 6x hat plus y, y hat, f2 is equal to 0x hat plus um, 5 y hat, right? And my net force is equal to uh, 8.66x hat plus 5 y hat. So this obvious, my net force 1, in order for this to work out, my force 1 has to be 8.66 x hat and 0 y hat as my F1. Okay? Newtons. All right, any questions so far? Okay. All right. Three forces given by F1 is equal to negative 2i hat plus 2j hat. It's that same as x hat and y hat. F2 is equal to 5i hat minus 13j hat. And F3 is equal to negative 45 I hat. Acts on an object to give it an acceleration of magnitude of 15 meters per second squared. Okay. So if we were to add these up, so here's my F1, which is negative 2 I hat plus 2 j hat, f2 is equal to 5 i hat minus 13 j hat, and f3 is equal to negative 45 i hat plus 0 j hat. So my net force is equal to, here if I add them up, I should get negative 42 i hat minus 11 j hat as my okay so if i were to look for the magnitude of my net force and that is square root of 42 squared plus 11 squared and that comes out to um 43.417 newtons and since net force is equal to MA, right, it is 43.417 is equal to M times 15 meters per second squared. So I can actually calculate my ex uh, um, mass, right? So my mass is equal to uh, 43.417 divided by 15, 
and that should come out to 2.89 kilograms. Oh, that's part B, sorry. That's part B. Part A is finding the accelerations, uh, finding the polar form. So, if, okay, so we need to find, so this is the magnitude of it, and then we need to find the angle theta. So theta is equal to, now this is in third quadrant. So if we were to look at this, it's going to be somewhere like, like this way. It's my net force. So if we were to look for this angle beta, right? so let's look for the angle beta, which is the reference angle. That is the 10 inverse of right? y over x, which is negative 11 over negative 42. So my angle beta should come out to, what is that, um, 14 point six eight degrees therefore therefore my theta is equal to 180 plus 14.68 degrees therefore it is 194.68 degrees is my theta so my net force in polar form should be 43.4 2 newtons comma theta is equal to 194.68 degrees as my polar form. Okay. Uh, so we did B. What about C? If the object is initially at rest the object is initially at rest, what is its speed after 10 seconds? Well, we know initial velocity is zero. We're looking for VF. Right? So it's going to be accelerating from here, like zero to whatever for 10 seconds with this acceleration. Where is the acceleration? 15 meters per second squared. So we know the acceleration is 15 meters per second squared. Okay, and it's traveling for 10 seconds. Oh, this is easy, right? This is equation number one. So VF is equal to VI plus AT. So VF is equal to zero plus 15 times 10. So my VF comes out to um, 0.5. What? How the hell did you get this? That's not correct. It should be just 150 meters per second. I don't know. Check the answer on that because that does not look correct. All right. Yeah, that's, wow, that's really, really off. I don't know what's going on with that. All right. Um, D, find the velocity vector in Cartesian coordinate. Okay. So what's the velocity vector in Cartesian coordinate? Now, this, of course, is only the magnitude of my final velocity. So it's going this way. So that's my VF, really, right? So this angle here right here happens to be 14.68 uh, degrees, right? Don't forget, this is in third quadrant. So if you want to find your VFX, your VFX is VF times cosine of theta, and that is 150 times cosine of 194.68 degrees. If you use that proper angle, you should automatically get a negative sign coming out. So let's see if that works, okay? So 150 times cosine of 194.68. And look at that, voila. Negative 
45.1 meter per second x hat will be my VFX, right? And then for my VFY is equal to VF times sine of theta, and that is 150 times sine of 194.68, right? So 150 times sine of 194.68, and I get negative, so VFY is negative 38.0 meters per second, Y hat. So my VF, after 10 seconds, right, at 10 seconds, should equal to negative 145.1, X hat minus 38.0 Y hat meters per second. All right, I hope that's good enough, right? Any questions? Are we okay, Michael? All right. All right. Let's take a look at page six. Now, Newton's laws. Now, these are conceptual questions again, so it should be a good idea to understand these. Um, why is the action reaction forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, yet they do not cancel out? Well, that happens because they're not, action and reaction forces are not acting on a one single object. They're not like, you know, two, two forces acting on one object. They are two separate agents acting on each other, which is two huge different things, okay? So, so it, it is, Force on one by two, which is in the opposite direction of force on two by one. So they are acting on two different objects by two different agents, right? We're not talking about two forces acting on one agent. We're acting, we're talking about two forces acting on each other. So one's acting this way, the other one's acting that way, okay? So they do not uh, usually cancel out unless they're acting on, on one single object, all right? And what about 13? Clearly identify all the action-reaction pair forces on the figure below. So force on handle by hand, and then force on hand by the handle. So obviously the force of the hand grabbing on the handle has to be equal and opposite of force of the handle acting on the hand. Then force on the nail by the hammer, and then force on the hammer by the nail. So equal and opposite for action-reaction. Then the force on the wood by the nail, and the reaction will be force on nail by the wood. So these three are the action-reaction forces. All right? All right. 14, the following statement is true. Explain it. Two people are having a tug of war. A person that pushes harder horizontally against the ground wins. I think I, re I remember talking to you about tug of war between the football players and the middle school orchestra. Remember? Right? If I were to place more... Uh, friction between the ground and the shoes of the middle school orchestra and put the football players on ice, right, with roller skates on, then obviously the football players are going to lose because the middle school orchestra would have more friction. And so when they push on the ground, right, when they push on the ground against uh, their shoes, spike shoes, that's going to actually make them pull the rope harder this way than the football players are just going to just slide right across, all right? 
the tension in the rope is internally same for both, whether they pull harder or they pull less or they pull harder and they pull less, the tension is going to be the same. Okay. Um, so tension itself is internal, so it's not going to really make the difference. It's, it's what the friction between the shoes and the ground will make the difference. So when the friction, when the shoe pushes on the ground, the ground pushes on the shoe. So the ground force is the external, and it will move the system that way. All right. Good, 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 good. Moving on. Lesson four, specific forces. All right. On a hypothetical planet, an acceleration due to gravity of the surface is 0.72 g's of the Earth. Okay? If an object weighs 25 newtons on Earth, what will its weight on the surface of the hypothetical planet be? Well, it's, it's you know, the m times g is equal to 25 newtons. Now, there's so many correct ways to do this. I'm not going to... I show you every single correct way. So M, if you were to calculate this on Earth, is <coughs> nine point eight. Right? So the mass of this object should come out to two point five five kilograms. Okay. So on the hypothetical planet now, your G is point seven two of the Earth. Right, so m times 0 0.72 times 9.8 is acceleration due to gravity on the hypothetical planet. Right, so they want to know what that is. So 2.55 times 0 0.72 times 9.8 is what you should have, and that is equal to 18. Newtons. Now you could have just simply gone 0 0.720 times 25, and it should have worked out exactly the same. Okay. And if you don't believe me, here it is. Boom. All right. So I'm not going to do every single possibility of correct solution on that. There's plenty other ways too. All right, uh, 16, an electron of mass 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilogram has initial speed of 3 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. It travels in a straight line and its speed increases to 7 times 10 to the fifth meters per second in a distance of 0 0.05 meters. Assuming its acceleration is constant, determine the force. This is just like the bullet problem, except initial velocity is not zero. All right? So we know um, we have to find acceleration first to find the force. Okay? We don't know what force caused it, but we just know it accelerated because external force was applied. So let's find the acceleration. So Vf is equal to 7.00 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. My Vi is equal to um, 3.0 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Right? We know the distance that it travels to create that acceleration is only 0 0.05 meters. So we're looking for acceleration. So, of course, since we don't have time here, we can use Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta X. Vf, 7 times 10 to the fifth quantity squared is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the fifth quantity squared plus 2 times A times 0 0.05. 
So if you could do your math here, my acceleration comes out to 4 times 10 to the 12th meters per second squared. Some people will get confused, like, wait a minute, that looks like it's like much, much bigger than speed of light. No, this is not speed. This is acceleration. Okay? Acceleration is not same as speed. So once you know the acceleration, F equals ma, right? So the force that's causing this to accelerate is equal to I believe it's only 3.644 times 10 to the negative 18th newtons. So that's like smaller than Microsoft Zero, literally, right? So that force is really minimal. Okay? All right, what about part B? Compare this force with the weight of the electron. So what is the weight of the electron? So that's, this is part A, part B. The weight of electron is equal to the mass of the electron times G. Well, it is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st times 9.8. And that is really, really small, right? That's like 9 times 10 to the negative 30th newtons. Negative 30th versus 18, right? So how much to 3.644 EE, negative 18, right? Divide by uh, 9 EE, negative 30th. It's like 4 times 10 to the 11th times greater force than the weight of the electron itself. All right? So billion is what? Ninth, right? Trillion is 12th. So like 400 billion times, right? So this force is 400 billion times greater than the weight, than the weight, okay? All right, 17. Besides its weight, a 2.8 kilogram object is subject to one other constant force. The object starts from rest and in 1.2 seconds experiences displacement of this much. Determine the other force. Now if you think about it, okay, uh, let's find out what the weight is, okay, because we know the mass of this object. So since Fg is equal to 2.80 times 9.8, okay? If you work that out, I think you get something like 27.44 newtons as the weight. So that's one of the forces acting on it, okay? Then, if it displaced this much, If it displaced this much in 1.2 seconds, right, can we find the acceleration, okay, of this object during this 1.2 seconds if it started from rest? Okay, so delta x is equal to vit plus one half. A T squared, and this, these are all in the x directions, x directions. And then delta y is equal to 
v i y times time plus one half a sub y t squared. The x is given to us, the displacement is given to us as 4.2. Since it starts from rest, my initial velocity in the x direction is 0. Plus 1 half times a sub x times t squared, which is 1.2 squared. So my acceleration in the x direction is simply 2 times 4.2 divided by 1.2 right, squared, so 1.44, right? So what's my acceleration in the x? I get something like uh, 5.83 meters per second squared. Same thing for the y. The y, I get negative 3.3 .3 is my displacement. The initial velocity in y is 0, so 0 plus 1 half times a sub y times 1.20 squared. So if you work out the a sub y, my a sub y comes out to negative, uh, I guess, 4.58 meters per second squared. Well, if it's experiencing that, my net force has to be mass times AX X hat plus mass times AY Y hat has to be my net force. Is that, is that okay, Michael? All right. Therefore, 2.80 times 5.83 X hat plus 2.80 times negative 4.58 y hat is my net force. So my net force is equal to, if you work it out, I think you get something like 16.324 x hat minus 12.824 y hat. So since 27.44 is acting in the y direction. So I'm going to say my fg is equal to 0 x hat, right, minus 27.44 y hat as my one of the forces. And my other force, the mysterious force that we don't know, right, is equal to x, so fx x hat plus fy y hat. And if I add them together, I should get my net force of 16.324 x hat minus 12.824 y hat. So obviously, fx is easy, right? So fx is 16.324 x hat. And fy happens to be, uh, this is my f question mark, right? fy happens to be um, this minus that, right? Right, so... This has to be plus positive 16, no, 14.616 y hat. All right. Therefore, my F mystery is equal to 16.324 x hat plus. 14.616 y hat newtons. All right. Any questions? All right, then we'll keep moving along. How are we doing in the cyber world? Are you guys still up? 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at page eight. Okay. This is a good problem. It's a very nice uh, conceptual problem. Okay. A worker drags 310 kilogram crate across a factory floor by pulling on the rope tied to a crate. Okay. The worker exerts a force of 450 newtons on the rope, which is inclined at 38 degrees to the horizontal. And the floor exerts a horizontal force of 125 newtons that opposes the motion. So we need to draw all the... Um, so here, this is the... I'm going to call this frictional force because we know it's going to be opposing the motion. So I'm going to call that frictional force is 125 newtons in the opposite direction of motion. And I'm going to call this one tension, okay, which is 450 newtons. And I'm going to draw my Fg, right? My Fg will be, here's my Fg. And Fg is equal to uh, 310 times 9.8. So this is huge, right? So 310 times 9.8. And I get something like uh, th 3,038 newtons of force in Fg. Then I have one more force acting on that, and that is the normal force. Right? We don't know what normal force yet because here's my F tension. So F tension has the Y component as well as the X component. Okay? A Draw a free body diagram for the crate. There it is. This is the free body diagram. Okay? So I guess I'm going to like darken it up so that this looks like it's tension here like this. You could make it bigger if you want to. but All right. And then the friction, which is the red, is going to go this way. That's the friction. All right? If you want to draw bigger on the side, you could do that. Now, the tension, everything else looks like it's on the axis except for the tension. So we're going to have to sort of draw the tension in a separate way and break up the tension in its components. So here's my tension, let's say. And I'm going to break that tension up into its X and Y components. So here's my TY. And here's my... Tx, okay. And the angle here is 38 degrees. Okay. So Tx obviously is T times cosine of theta, which is 450 times cosine of 38 degrees. So what's my Tx? My Tx looks like it is 354.6 newtons, x set. And then Ty, obviously, is T times sine of theta, which is 450 times sine of 38 degrees. And my Ty comes out to 277 newtons, y hat. All right, that's part A. What about part B? Part B says calculate the normal force. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to work with all the Y components, right? So let's think about calculating the normal force where sum of all forces in Y is equal to M a y and since my ty is less than my fg this 
crate will not be lifting off the floor. It'll be staying on the floor. If, at best, stay on the floor. If the floor can support that, it's going to go through the floor. But we're going to assume the floor is pretty strong and it's going to be able to support that crate. Because 3,000 versus 277, definitely, it's going to stay. It's not going to levitate. And sum of all my forces in Y is equal to, I have one, two, three forces in Y, right? I have basically F normal, right, plus FG plus TY. So my M A Y is equal to F normal positive. I'm going to consider up direction positive. Right. So let's let's do that. Up positive, down negative, and to the right positive, to the left is negative. Okay, and FG definitely will be negative then. TY is positive. And since this crate is not accelerating up or down, my acceleration of this crate vertically, AY, is zero. So zero is equal to my F normal minus 3,038 plus 277. So my F normal is equal to, bring this to the other side, becomes positive, bring this to the other side, becomes negative, and you should get 2,761 newtons. That's my F normal. Okay. C, calculate the acceleration of the crate. So this is my B. Well, acceleration of the crate is basically, if I were to say, sum of all forces in the X direction is equal to MAX. And sum of all forces in the x direction, there are only two forces, and that is Tx right, plus F friction. So Max is equal to Tx positive, friction negative. So let's calculate what we have. Here, my mass is 310 times AX is equal to TX. We calculate it to be 354.6 minus the friction, which is 125 newtons. Right? So if we calculate for AX, my AX is equal to this minus that is, I guess, 229.6, divide that by 310, so my AX comes out to 0 0.74 meters per second squared. I know this wasn't given, but let's try one more, part D. I know this wasn't in the part of the problem, but what if I ask you what is the mu sub k? What is the kinetic coefficient of friction? Well, we know 
frictional force is equal to mu times F normal. And since mu sub k is what we're looking for, right, and it's sliding because it's definitely accelerating, so it is mu sub k, it's not mu sub s. So since the frictional force is 125 newtons, and that is equal to mu sub k times F normal, and F normal we calculated to be 2,761 newtons. So my mu sub k is equal to 125 over 2761. And what is that equal to? So 125 divided by 2761 is like 0 0.045. No units, because newtons divided by newtons should cancel out to nothingness. So that's a pretty smooth factory floor because it's a very low coefficient of friction. All right. Good. All right. All right. What about uh, what time is period over? Oh, 9-11? Quack. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. And we'll do 9 on, on Wednesday, okay, and Friday, okay. Um... All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So here's what you need to do for the rest of today. There are only seven multiple choice questions. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording here.